Good morning. I am Devasena. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about routing in mobile ad hoc networks. This topic is present in the subject wireless networks, also in mobile ad hoc network subject and in ad hoc sensor networks subject. Routing in wireless networks with infrastructure feature, it can support a base station to reach all mobile nodes, but it is not possible in ad hoc network. A destination range is out of range of a source node for transmitting packets. Routing is needed to find a path between source and destination and to forward packets appropriately. Now we see a routing example with the help of a small diagram. This diagram represents the information is being passed by the sender to a group of receivers. This is indicated in the diagram. Here is an, another example of routing of information from sender to information. Here, the sender sends the information to the destination. The information may reach to the destination in these ways, in variety of ways. It is indicated in the diagram. In wireless networks, using an infrastructure, cells have been defined. Within a cell, the base station can reach all mobile nodes without routing via broadcast. In ad hoc networks, each node must be able to forward data for other nodes. Following figure gives simple example of an ad hoc network. Here is a two snapshots. At time t1, how the routing takes place is indicated as well as at time t2, how routing takes place is indicated. The dark line between the nodes indicates the good link between the nodes. The thinner line indicates that a weak link that takes place between the nodes. Let us discuss this in further slides. At a T1 time, here is a representation. The network topology will shown. Five nodes N1 to N5 are connected depending on the current transmission characteristics between them. In this snapshot of a network, the node N4 can receive N1 over a good link, but N1 receives N4 via a weak link. This is indicated in the diagram. Links do not necessarily have the same characteristics in both directions. The reason for this are different antenna characteristics or transmit power. N1 cannot receive N2 at all, but N2 receives signals from N1. This is indicated in the diagram. At time t2, here is a representation of mm, transmission of data between the five nodes. Above criteria can be changed quite fast as the snapshot at time t2 shows in this diagram. N1 cannot receive N4 any longer, but N4 receives N1 only via a weak link. Now, N1 has an asymmetric link, but bidirectional link to N2 
that did not exist before. Now we see the fundamental difference between wired networks and ad hoc networks related to routing are as follows. First difference is asymmetric link. Second is redundant links. Third is interference. Fourth is dynamic topology. Under these topics, we are going to discuss the difference between the wired networks as well as ad hoc networks in further slides. Let us discuss about asymmetric links. If a node A requires a signal from node B, but this node does not tell us anything about the quality of the connection in reverse. Node B might receive nothing, have a weak link or even have a better link than the reverse direction. Routing information collected for one direction is of almost no use for the other direction. Many routing algorithms for wired networks rely on a symmetric scenario. Asymmetric links representation. First scenario, link asymmetry between sender to receiver takes place. This is indicated in that dotted link. But the information from the receiver to sender takes place in a proper manner that is indicated as a good link. The second scenario, link asymmetry takes place between receiver to the sender. It is indicated by a dotted line. But the sender sends the information to the receiver good link. A third scenario is third scenario is link asymmetry between sender and a receiver. In between the sender node as well as the receiver node, there is not a proper link that takes place between these nodes. This is indicated here. Next different is redundant links. Wired networks also have redundant links to survive link failures. There is only some redundancy in wired networks, which additionally controlled by a network administrator. But in ad hoc networks, nobody controls a redundancy. So there are many redundant links up to the extreme of a completely meshed topology. Routing algorithms for wired networks can handle some redundancy, but a high redundancy can cause a large computational overhead for routing table updates. Here is a redundant link representation diagram. Here we have two scenarios that is two optimal broadcasts in a manet. The links represent the connectivity among the nodes. Node S yes is the source node and node D is the last network node that is the destination node. The third difference is interference. In wired networks, Links exist only where a wire exists and the connections are planned by network administrators. This is not the case for wireless ad hoc networks. Links come and go depending on transmission characteristics. One transmission can interfere with another and nodes overhear the transmission of other nodes. Interference also help routing because a node can learn the topology with the help of packets it has overhead. Interference representation is shown here. Here we have mobile nodes. 
around the dotted circle indicates the signal range the blue color line indicates the wireless links the fourth difference is dynamic topology the greatest problem for routing arises from the highly dynamic topology in ad hoc networks routing tables must reflect these frequent changes in topology and routing algorithms have to be adopted routing algorithms used in wired networks would either react much too slowly or generate too many updates to reflect all changes in topology dynamic topology representation is shown here here we have four nodes the topology may change between these two scenarios this is indicated in the diagram let us see the observation related to routing in ad hoc networks traditional routing algorithms known from wired networks will not work effectively or fail completely these algorithms have not been designed with a highly dynamic topology asymmetric links or interference in mind routing in wireless ad hoc networks cannot rely on layer 3 knowledge alone that is network layer knowledge alone information from lower layers concerning connectivity or interference can help routing algorithms to find a good path many nodes need routing capabilities and at least one router has to be within the range of each node algorithms have to consider the limited battery power of these nodes ad hoc networks will be connectionless because it is not possible to maintain a connection in a fast changing environment and to forward data following this connection nodes have to make local decisions for forwarding and send packets roughly toward the final destination hoc routing protocols classification we are going to see now ad hoc routing protocols are classified into three types the first one is proactive routing protocol in that proactive routing protocol we have dsdv routing protocol ols routing protocol wrp routing protocol and then we have reactive routing protocol under the reactive routing protocol we have aodv routing protocol dsr routing protocol tora routing protocol the third routing protocol is a hybrid routing protocol under this hybrid routing protocol will be having cedar stara and zrp back to routing protocols here is a representation of proactive routing protocol steps in proactive routing protocol each node of the network maintains a single or multiple routing tables that are regularly updated each node will send a broadcasting message to all the other nodes in the network in order to detect the changes in their network topology types of proactive routing protocols are dsdv that is destination sequence distance vector routing protocol olsr that is optimized link state routing protocol and wrp that is wireless routing protocol these three are the proactive routing protocol types reactive routing protocols here is a representation of 
reactive routing protocol types. In reactive routing protocols, nodes collect information about network nodes only when needed, that is on-demand basis. The types of reactive routing protocols includes AODV, that is ad hoc on demand distance vector routing, DSR, that is dynamic source routing, and TORA, that is temporarily ordered routing algorithm. These three are the reactive routing protocols types. The third classification is hybrid routing protocols. Here is a representation of types of hybrid routing protocols. Hybrid routing protocols is the combination of proactive and reactive routing protocols. The types of hybrid routing protocols include SIDAR, that is Core Extraction Distributed Ad Hoc Routing Algorithm, STARA, Source Tree Adaptive routing algorithm and ZRP that is zone routing protocol. These three are the hybrid routing protocol types. Thank you very much for listening this lecture. For further updates kindly subscribe this channel. If you like this video means you can share this video to your friends.